guys, welcome to 7 Minutes to Mature Manhood. Men, how many of you could cut this open and count how many seeds are in this apple? I got another question for you. How many of you could take one of the seeds, look at it, and count how many apples are in that seed? Family worship is like the seeds of an apple that can grow fruit from time into eternity though even greater than an apple. I'm going to teach you and equip you to be the spiritual leader that you know deep inside you are called to be. Today we look at the foundational verse to Four Minutes to Mature Manhood. It comes from Ephesians 4.13. And today is that foundational day of episode one for our YouTube channel. We're looking at mature manhood in Christ. We're gonna cover the call, the caller, and the calling. Let's begin with Ephesians 4 verse 13 in the ESV. It uses this very unique word and it says this, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood. It's a very unique word used and translated here in the proper manner in the ESV, mature manhood. That's not exclusive to women, but it's talking primarily to men and what men are to be. And then it says, to the measure of the stature of the fullness in Christ. So today we look at mature manhood in Christ. This is what makes Grace Legacy Builders unique and distinct. You can go to all kinds of YouTube channels that talk about masculinity, macho man, uh, metrosexual, the feminized male. We're talking about mature manhood in Christ. First of all, it's the call to men to be the prophet, priest, and king. We're going to look at that extensively from Genesis to Revelation. And we're going to look at it from the time of the resurrection till the time of right now. What God calls men to be as mature men in Christ. First of all, we're going to see that the word is not in Jesus, but in Christ. That means he's the anointed and appointed. And he was anointed and appointed to be a prophet, priest, and king. And we ourselves are called men, specifically and especially to be the prophet who speaks the word of God into the life of our wife and our children, who knows the Bible, gets it out every night and reads it. We're to be the priest who prays with and for our family, a desperate need in today's time. And we're called to be the king. But men, stop right there. That means to rule benevolently, to be devoted and affirming. Uh, to our wife and to our children, laying down our lives like Jesus Christ did for us. So we're looking at mature manhood in Christ. We're talking about the call to mature masculinity, to be prophet, priest, and king. Now, this is why we're so unique and distinct, because it's the caller, the caller. Guys, in this passage especially, Jesus Christ is bringing gifts in his train. That means he's already the victor of the dark domain. That means the power that God exerted to raise Christ from the dead in Ephesians 1 is repeated in Ephesians 2 as the power that God uses to seat us at the right hand of God the Father Almighty with Christ Jesus. So he is the Christ, which means prophet, priest, and king, anointed and appointed to those offices. But here especially, listen to the caller. He's the victor. We have enough dead pan, hide behind everything Christianity today. We are victors. We're living in the power of the resurrection. When David's men came to help him in the Old Testament establish the first kingdom of God here on earth, they were called men of valor. Today, in the kingdom of God, we need men of valor to establish the eternal kingdom of Jesus Christ for here on earth and for all eternity. And men, that means virtue. And I want to end with this, the calling. Men, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to coach you 
to rise to the call, the caller and the calling of being a prophet, priest and king, and Jesus Christ, the victor. That means in our heart, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Those means that our hearts have to be full of the power of the resurrection that the Holy Spirit gives to us. Then we have to apply that to our homes. I'm going to challenge you men to lead daily father-led family worship. You don't have to go out and do this cowboy thing, this, that, or the other thing. What you have to be is consistent walking with Jesus Christ in your heart and in your home. And then men, we're going to talk about what gives a church reformation and revival? And that's taking God-centered, Christ-exalted masculinity into the church and serving his bride with great vigor, like we said, and virtue. And then lastly, guys, this. We are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. We go into the culture, we go into the community to make a difference. No more are we hiding behind walls. No more are we wimps. We are servant leaders. That's what it means to be mature and to have mature manhood in Christ. Follow the call to be prophet, priest, and king. Listen to the caller, Jesus Christ, the victor, a man of valor and virtue. And let's apply that in our calling, in our hearts, in our homes, in our churches, and in our communities, then we'll truly be the salt and light living in the power of the resurrected, supernatural, returning Jesus Christ. Let's go on this adventure together, men. Men, will you take the challenge from Grace Legacy Builders? That's what we're here to do, to equip you as a spiritual leader. Now, will you go home tonight, open the Bible to be the prophet, to speak the word of God into the life of your family, the priest to pray with and for your family and to be the king means to rule benevolently and sacrificially. Guys, be the man God has called you to be that you know deep inside of your heart you were created to be. Let's go on this adventure together. Thank you.